Welcome to tonight's episode of Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel. And as always, I have a very special guest for you, founder and CEO of The Dinner Table. Asha Boston will be with us for the next 30 minutes, so stay with us. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Beyond Focus TV allows you to discuss contemporary topics affecting the Caribbean people on both the national and local level. The show features informed guests who offer insight, debate, and evaluate various issues. Beyond Focus TV builds on the station's mission to provide useful information to the Caribbean people in New York and abroad. Beyond Focus TV, where our viewing audience can get educated, informed, and empowered. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel. And like I said, I have a very special guest for you, Asha Boston. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. Well, it's great to have you here. We love having people in the community who are doing great things. And, and we find people in the community who are doing great <laughs> things. So if we found you, that means you're definitely doing something big. I'm um, honored. So yes, yeah, so we're very glad to have you. Um, but before we get started, I always start off the program with my hot seat question, which is, who is? So who is Asha Boston? Oh, that is a very fun question to answer. <laughs> <laughs> Asha Boston is a nonprofit founder. I'm the founder and CEO of The Dinner Table Doc, um, which is a nonprofit that works with young women of color between the ages of 10 through 18 to provide college career readiness programs and workshops. Um, in addition to doing that, I'm also a a filmmaker so I love creative arts and directing and producing absolutely and outside of that so before we we kind of dive into the dinner table and the, and the filmmaking stuff you know kind of what led to this point you know everybody always has such an interesting journey and how things you know kind of bobble and weave to where they are now so give us a little bit of that story sure um so i feel very lucky and very blessed to have been a native new yorker and i feel like growing up in new york city you're exposed to opportunities um at any age and so when i was 16 i had the opportunity to work with teen vogue as a teen vogue it girl um, that program predates Instagram <laughs> and a few other social media platforms. But in essence, it was like being an influencer before being an influencer mm -hmm. was a thing. So you had the opportunity to not just go to events at their headquarters, but you also can take the surveys that would end up in the magazine. And that experience opened my eyes to this entire career field of journalism and entertainment. Mm -hmm. And I think I definitely got bit by that bug, and I decided that it was a space that I wanted to stay in. And so that's really how I got my start. That's amazing. And it's kind of exciting to hear that. And I remember that because I think we're in the same age bracket. Yeah. And you would, like, <laughs> all those cool magazines, and you would read up to see what that person was, you yes. know, the survey results <laughs> and all those cool things. Um, and a lot has changed. You know, like you said, you were influencer before the influencer. It right. was a different <laughs> way of influencing. Yes, a, a totally a different time. For sure. Um, but still, you know, kind of set the foundation for where you are today, which is great. Yes. Um, so tell us about the dinner table and how, how it all came to be and um, when did that all get started? Yes, so I think the dinner table is a direct reflection of the experience that I had when I was younger. You know, being exposed to a career opportunity that early gave me the chance to really jumpstart my career. And so being a mentor and giving back in that space is something that I've always been passionate about because I'm like, if I did it at that age and I got this far, surely like other people can as well. Um, the dinner table started when I was in college. It was my senior year, my last semester, um, and I knew that I really wanted to create a film, um, but I wasn't really sure what the subject was going to be on. Mm -hmm. Up until that point, I had worked part-time in journalism um, while being a student, mm -hmm. so it was a very fun experience, mm -hmm. but I was anxious to find a new way to tell stories. And so it just happened that I ended up like creating this idea after some encouragement from one of my professors mm -hmm. to create a documentary called The Dinner Table. 
And at that time, it was aimed to be the antithesis of what you see happening on reality television, where women, especially women of color, sit around dinner tables and things get chaotic. Yep. And so I wanted to show the opposite. I wanted to show healthy relationships where maybe you do have conflict, but there is also conflict resolution. And you are doing amazing things, but here's the balance between you know navigating your professional life and your personal life. Um, and really make something that was inspirational for young girls, especially young girls of color. Um, I was particularly inspired by Sesame Street. Um, okay, that's very interesting. <laughs> yeah, you know, when I, I'm, I'm a researcher, so when I was looking up shows that have withstood the test of time and tell great stories, Sesame Street is on, like... Hands, hands down, 50 yeah. plus years? I mean, isn't it crazy? And it all came from this very simple question of, can children's programming be educational? You know, so I thought, like... Well, can something like reality television, which is addicting, be educational or be a well-rounded and holistic experience? Yeah. So that's how The Dinner Table was born um, in like its that. essence. Yeah. And um, from there, I ended up like graduating, coming home to New York because I went to school in Atlanta, Agnes Scott College. Um, when I came home to New York... Um, I had some friends like tell me to take it to their old high school or to their church or to our social organization. And like I got used to like telling girls about this film, how it's so cool and watching them react to it. But one day a student challenged me and she's like, this is like nice or whatever, but this is not my real life. And something yeah, about her saying... What did she mean about that? Yeah, she, she basically said, like, it's nice that these women can sit at this table and have these conversations, but this isn't something that happens for me. And so it almost felt like a challenge. <laughs> I, I love, like, creative problem solving, so I'm like, why can't this be something for you? Um, and so that's how I started to work on actually creating dinner table events where we were bringing young women into the room with women from all walks of life and all different um, stages of their profession to have this dialogue about what it is to be who you are and, and how you identify. And, you know, I was doing all this while working, like, my first part-time job in television. Um, mm -hmm. And so it was a really cool experience to, to see one side of how yeah. TV works and then have these discussions with these young women in these rooms um, and, and just, like, see how it affects them as an audience. Yeah. And, um, you know, eventually, like... The dinner started to catch on where different professionals from schools were coming, and they're like, do you do this workshop in school? There do you go. You know, like, so then I was like, oh, okay. So I started doing, like, small school workshops and, like, using my sick days <laughs> from my job to, like, go to schools and talk to girls. And then it got to the point where it's like, you know what? I think this is an actual organization. I can, number one, no longer pay for this out of my pocket. <laughs> so it's time to incorporate, and it's time to get the 501c3 going. And then and just time, you know, I wanted time to be able to build the company and further develop it. And so I ended up leaving my jobs working in television um, as like a freelance like production assistant and mm -hmm. then associate producer to really dive in and create a really solid foundation for an organization that, I mean, in conception will be 10 next year. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Wow, congratulations. Thank I mean, you. it's about to be 10 years old. That's a long time. Yeah, it is a long time. It's <laughs> a long time. You sustained it. Um, and it's a journey. Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, it is a journey that has not been easy because there is no guidebook to starting a nonprofit. No. <laughs> no one tells you how hard it is. You know, I think the most advice I got was like, get the 501c3 because then you don't have to be taxed on things. And it's like, you get that, but then there are so many other hurdles that you have to overcome. Like, what does your programming look like? Mm. And how does that ebb and flow over the years? You know, I think the format in which we've developed programs has changed so much and changed even more with everything that's transpired in the past two years um, with the start of the pandemic. But because the foundation has been so solid, we've had an accelerated period of growth where I think now more than ever, the organization is really starting to find its foot and have its true impact as not just an organization that helps young women in New York, but really helps young women around the world. That's great. How does that make you feel? Really proud of myself. <laughs> I don't say that often. Um, I don't even really celebrate it often because I'm always doing work in some capacity. So it's like by the time one great thing happens, my head is back down and pounding the pavement to get something done. 
but I'm really proud of how far we have come and it just excites me to no end and really warms my heart when I see, you know, young women in places as far as Nigeria and in states that in cities that I am learning about for the first time. Like we have students who are in Shreveport, Louisiana and right. in Tylertown, Mississippi. And it's like these are places that I, I've never heard of before. But now we're all connected through this organization and, you know, your lives are being transformed by the work that we do. And that's really special to me. It, it is. Well, hold that thought. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Stay with us. you're watching Beyond Focus TV. So Asha, let's talk about some of the challenges that people don't realize. Um, and you kind of briefly touched upon it because people are like, oh, start a 501c3. Okay, there's a million and one hurdles that you have to go through. Um, so kind of share that experience with everyone at home, just stuff that we may not even be aware of um, that you just ran into from your firsthand experience. Yes, for sure. I think with starting a nonprofit, you always are well-intentioned because you're like, I want to do this good thing. I want to give back to the community. But a nonprofit, to me, at the end of the day, is good work, but also a business, you know? And that mm -hmm. was something that I did not realize going in. I'm like, I want to do this great thing. We want to have more events. We want to get sponsorships. And I really had to step back and learn the basics of business and how to hmm. create a business plan and how to create a five and 10 year plan and just how to structure the organization so that we're not just doing good with the students that we serve, but we're also doing well financially and we're also able to sustain ourselves and be, you know, not just like a beacon of light for girls, but like really like a, a solid organization. Mm -hmm. um, and so learning the, bu the business was kind of like, building a bridge while crossing it <laughs> building the plane while you fly yeah building the plane <laughs> while you fly which is is not easy at all yeah. um you know i've learned that there is an entire language to grant writing that i had to learn yeah um there's an entire language to business that i also had to learn sponsorship especially writing as well sponsorship writing working with partners and collaborators i think a lot of times when we think of entrepreneurship um, it's this assumption that you're just working for yourself and you have no boss, but it's like when you're the boss, like you are now working with people, which is very different from working for someone because working with people, it's like you have to understand um, how they work and the best way to conflict resolute and also like just see through different things that you wouldn't have to consider when you're working, you know, a regular job, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're helping someone else solve a problem, but when you're in the hot seat, you're the one solving the problem. So it's like, you always have to have answers Yes, <laughs> that I did not expect. Your customer service, oh, your yeah. HR. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're everything. You're the yeah. accountant, you're the lawyer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, so it was definitely a, a learning experience, but I'm very glad to have gone through it. Absolutely. And in those 10 years, you know, it's about to be 10 years, so you have nine full years. What are some of the key moments, highlights that really stand out for you? Um, I think it's really hard to pinpoint one because... I really yeah, find a few. What are, so what? much joy in the girls. <laughs> I, like I that. mean, that their transformations over time. You know, um, when I started this organization, I really didn't think that we would have the reach that we would. I wanted to help young women in New York City, and so when we really became incorporated um, and started having events, it was about 2015. And so that's when I started to meet like a lot of middle school students that were excited about the organization. But now like those middle school students are graduating. I'm on Instagram. I'm watching them graduate from college and yeah. reach back out and say like they're so grateful for the dinner table space. And I, I'm, I'm shocked and, and just really heartwarmed every time at, at their growth. 
but then also just meeting all of the new young women that we've met in the past two years with the expansion that we've had when we um, switched to digital programming because of everything yeah. that was happening. Um, meeting girls in California and Texas and Louisiana and just all over the United States and even a little bit around the world. I mean, in our virtual summer camp last year, we had a student all the way from the Philippines and she was 24 hours ahead of us. And so even just to know that she was that dedicated to be there and excited to be in this space with other young women of color that are going through similar things and they're learning and growing together. I mean, those, those moments are priceless it's it's why we do this work it, it really is um and it's it's a lot do you ever see or what's the length of time i know it's from for girls age 10 through 18 do you have you had anyone stay for extended periods of time like literally watch them come from <laughs> 12 to 17 or something yeah. which is a huge transformation in in a girl's life yes yes we definitely have i think our first set of um you know young women that we saw when we started having events you know they were in middle school and literally this year they're all starting to graduate from college so it's a very surreal (laughs) it's a very surreal experience um to watch them not just graduate from college but also graduate from high school and matriculate into the new spaces that they're trying out um you know i'm excited with the revamp of programming that we've had um we now kind of extend and we have an extension that caters to what i call our eight and nine year old friends okay (laughs) so um starting from eight and nine we do have some girls that have joined us that young and they continue in our program so i'm excited to watch them grow over time and see them go on to do great things we've had Um, Even interns that have joined us when they were in high school now in their like well into their first jobs at places like NPR and Amazon. And so it's just it's exciting to watch them grow over time. And and I'm just so proud of each and every one of them. That is so exciting to hear. And it, it is heartwarming because it's your work. You've put in a lot of time and to see the the fruits of your labor, so to speak, even though they're the ones going through the program. Yes. You know, you curated something with them. Yeah. And it's cultivated, and now it's like, okay, you can go. But you've set them free, like, with the best tools possible. Yes, yes. I mean, all of our workshops and programs are centered around identity. Um, You know, we do brand ourselves as a college and career readiness organization, but I think identity is a huge part of that process that's often overlooked. Because in order to make the right decision for where you want to go to college or what career you'd like to embark on, you have to know who you are at the core. And so a lot of our workshops center on understanding who you are, what you like, um, who it is you want to become. And then as they get older in the programming, it's exploring what does your network look like and how can you start to plug in all the things you understand about yourself into places that make sense that are at your immediate disposal or that we can hopefully bridge that gap and make an immediate um, opportunity for you. And what about those who, and, and I always tell people, it's okay to not know what you want to do. It's hard to expect someone at 14 or 15 oh, yeah. to make a lifelong and I always tell people, it's okay to switch. Yes. It's not like in our parents' and grandparents' day, you got one job and you better pick correctly because that <laughs> is your one job for the rest for, of your life. Forever. <laughs> um, it's okay to switch jobs. Yes. Actually, millennials switch jobs. The average length of a job is All 18 time. months. Yes. That's <laughs> long. They switch jobs a lot. We, because I'm in that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we switch jobs a lot and it's okay. Yes, yeah, we definitely make space for them to know that it is okay to change your mind. Try everything because you can. I tell all of my mentees and all of my students, once you have the title of student under your belt, use that to your advantage. Write whoever you want to write. I'm a student and I'm so interested and people love students. So they'll, of course they'll give you a chance to shadow them or you know, have an internship opportunity or even ask a lot of questions because they understand you're in a state of you know, exploring and inquiry. And so we, we yeah, and learning. So we definitely encourage them to to try everything. So yeah, we'll hold that thought. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Stay with us.
welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. So, Asha, great work. I know a lot has been going on. Why don't you fill us in about what you have planned? Give us a sneak peek. If you could give us a little hint on what's coming out for 2023. I can't believe we're already getting ready for that, but what's in the bag? Oh, yeah. Well, the dinner table is expanding. Um, so, prior to, we mainly offered our services independently online. Um, but as of this spring, we're officially um, Department of Education vendors for not just New York City, but also Washington, D.C. So that oh allows us. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. It allows us the opportunity to go into schools and be a part of a school day um, as the school wishes. So we can go in and be a class that students take. They can take the dinner table and they can have this very like segmented time to do all of this exploration self in addition to all their studies, which is very exciting. Um, we are going to keep up our independent program because we have like found a very beautiful community and we want to continue to nurture those students as they matriculate and grow through life. Um, so that's very exciting. And then we're also very excited to start bringing back our in-person events yes oh my goodness we have one grand event at the end of the year called hot combs and sunday dinners which we're turning into hot a hot combs and sunday <laughs> dinners yes it is it is the flagship event of our organization it is that beautiful event where all the students get to meet but they also do what we did in the genesis of the organization which is meet women from all different walks of life and have really amazing conversations over some fantastic dinner. So I'm super excited because we're going to turn it into a conference and hopefully we're able to get sponsorship so that for the students that are in our independent programs from across the United States and even beyond, they'll be able to come to New York um, and not just meet each other for the first time in person, but also meet students that are in the New York program and the DC program and have a fantastic time learning about themselves and each other. So I'm really excited Amazing. for that. So that'll be towards the end of the year. Oh yeah, for sure. We're working on it this year, but 2023 will definitely have it down packed. Oh my god. That's that's amazing. So <laughs> excited. You have to keep me posted on that. And for what sure. about social media? Because we know everyone's trying to be socially connected. The yes. digital wave is is what it is. So how do we find you on social media? Yes, so you can follow the dinner table on Twitter and Instagram at dinner table doc. We kept the doc in there because it started as a documentary. So D I N N E R T A B L E D O C on both Twitter and Instagram. You can find us on Facebook by looking up the dinner table doc. We'll pop right up with a very beautiful pink logo. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're interested in following me personally, my Instagram is Asha. K A Y B Asha K B, um, but the more exciting updates happen on the dinner <laughs> table because I'm I'm not the greatest social media. -er. <laughs> no, that's fine. So great, everybody at home could go in and check that out if they have any questions, inquiries, or anything like that. Yes, um, you know, for anyone at home who just might have some general questions, you know, a niece, a nephew, a child who wants to get involved, what is the first step? of getting involved. Yes, so the best thing to do is to visit our website, www.thedinnertabledoc.com. Um, that website has not only a contact form that lets you detail which program you're interested in enrolling your scholar in, it also has our phone numbers where you can contact us, call we definitely answer and share information about programs that are coming up social media is also really important because we promote all of our events on social media and you also can join our email list i think that's the fastest way to hear when something is going on because we always send blasts to our email subscribers first okay that's great so definitely um the dinner table doc dot com. Yes. You can check that out. You get some updates. You can see what's going on because I know a lot of people are going to want to get involved. Yes. Maybe register their scholar, as you said, yes. which is great. <laughs> um, what's the cost associated to somebody who wants to register? Yes. So um, thankfully, we have been granted a very amazing grant by the Pincus Family Foundation, who we're so grateful for, which allowed us to have scholarships um, for students that aren't able to avoid uh, for the registration cost of our programs. Mm -hmm. We try to keep it very low. So registration cost is usually between, I want to say a sliding scale of 65 to $80. Oh. But um, we definitely are very happy for their sponsorship because it allows us to offer the programs free for students in need. That's great. <laughs> um, well, you know, that's a blessing. When you're doing good work, you know, the good comes to you. So 
basically you pay the registration fee, but the actual cost of the program is no charge. No charge. Thanks to the Pingus Family Foundation. They're incredible. Well, thank you guys. And we're definitely looking forward to having more of that. Um, and what's the length of the current program? Yes, yeah, so we offer um, one program a year. Um, it's a book club called the Beyond the Table Book Club. It's also the program that runs in the schools that we work with. And outside of the book club that is really from about October to May, we also do four events a year, one per quarter. So if you haven't been able to register for the book club, you can catch us at 18 under 18, which is an award show that happens in March. Um, after that, we have an event called the Senior Brunch for 8th and 12th grade scholars that happens. That's actually coming up very soon. Um, we have a summer camp called the Miseducation of Brown Girls Summer Camp that primarily takes place during July. And then the final event of the year, of course, is the Hot Combs and Sunday Dinner event that is in December. Love it. So it's jam-packed. Oh, yeah. You There's can, always something going on. And you can just see the happiness and glee in your face. Like, <laughs> it really radiates and beams off of you. Um, Thank you. We know it's exhausting work, <laughs> but you love it. Yes, I, I, I really and truly do. And it shows, um, and it's so positive. Do you have any final words, any messages to those at home, to potential sponsors, to those who just want to be a part of this? Oh, yes. Um please support us. <laughs> that is my plea. Please support us. This work is not easy. And as you can imagine, being a small nonprofit based in New York City, there are so many nonprofits here. And so, you know, finding the right grants is not always an easy process for us. So we are always very grateful um, for foundations that do take interest in supporting our program so that we can keep the cost very low and affordable for students who, you know, really are just looking for a new opportunity. You can also donate to the dinner table. You can make a one-time donation or a monthly donation um, when you visit our website it will prompt you to do so there are donate buttons everywhere <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you can also donate um, on the donate buttons on social media so we we always appreciate um, <clears throat> any donation that can help us continue to do this work that's amazing well Asha thank you so much and we will have you back I am looking forward to hearing more about this oh thank you so much thank you for having me I had a fantastic time you too and as always if you have any questions or comments you can send us an email at info at beyondfocusmedia.com I'm your host Lydia Patel thank you so much for joining us and we'll be back again next week same time same place you're watching Beyond Focus TV stay with us Beyond Focus TV show wants and needs your feedback did we blunder Please let us know so we can improve. Was the show helpful to you? Drop us a note so we can share the success with our staff members. Is there something you think we could do better? We welcome new ideas and new approaches to old ideas. Do you have a great suggestion? Let us know and we'll work on it. If you would like to share your comments anonymously, please send us an email at info at beyondfocusmedia.com. If you want to get in touch with the executive producer directly, send him an email at gene at beyondfocusmedia.com. We really look forward to hearing from you.